Hello, and welcome to another Manna here on Thursday. We've been in uh, the book here of First John, and we finished up chapter 3 last week, and we were, were talking about abiding in our faith, or the, the word that is closely associated with that enduring is kind of what that word abiding means, is, is staying in or enduring through those hard times. And, and there's certainly a lot to endure in the Christian life, and we see that's what John is instructing us here in chapter 4. So our verses today are chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know that the Spirit of God, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the Spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, and they are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So one of the things that we need to endure is false prophets and false spirits, as John is calling them here, falsehood in general, what we want to do is abide in Christ, remain in, remain in Christ. And these falsehoods would seek to separate us from, from Christ in almost every level. They're the, the tool bag of these false prophets and false uh, teachers is uh, very limited, but it's, but it's effective. The first that we see here is that they would seek to deny. And they would seek to deny that Jesus has come in the flesh is the first things. And so sometimes they just deny it outrightly, and other times they'll just deny a small enough portion of who Jesus is to try to sneak that error in. That reminds, yeah, so this this reminds me of someone that, that I recently spoke with um, their daughter or their daughter's friend had recently graduated college with an advanced degree and very smart young lady and had taken a job with the U.S. Treasury Department. And she was working for their, in, um, their Bureau of Engraving and Printing. And part of her role was to combat counterfeiting. So she spent the first period of time on the job in training. And what they had her and her fellow uh, co-workers studying what well, was not all the new counterfeiting techniques or all of the counterfeiting dollars that were out there, but they spent time studying the bills themselves and the, and the plates that were used to print them and the inks and all of that so that they could very clearly distinguish between a counterfeit and a real by studying what was real. And so, um, you know, those methods of counterfeiting are constantly changing and the tactics used are constantly changing. So for them, as they studied all the design features of the bill and the feel of the paper and all of the rest, they were pretty easily able to spot a fake after their, after their training. And so for us, we have the same implication. We should be studying and training as well and using God's word as our true so that we can easily spot a fake as well. And so John is giving us our study lesson today, in the first part he's saying that we need to test the spirits because there have already in his day been many false prophets. And so how many more have been added since then? But really they're they're using two two tactics that we can easily spot. So the first is we should study the real deal. We should be studying the Word of God so that we know what we know and why we know it, right? And so We should know from plain scripture that Jesus came in the flesh is the first. That's the first thing that's often denied is that Jesus did not come in the flesh. And there's many parts to this. Uh, Three uh, main ones, at least, is the virgin birth. And so sometimes the virgin birth is what gets assailed. And other times it's, well, he didn't have a physical body. He was really just kind of spirit. He appeared real. 
but he wasn't physical. Um, and the other one was that, that he, um, you know, closely connected to that was that he, you know, he lived among us as, as a human, but he wasn't really, it wasn't really God. Those kind of attacks of, of Jesus is coming in the flesh. And the second part of this test is found here in verse 5 and 6, right? It says, they're of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, he who knows God hears us, and he who is not of God does not hear us. And so this hearing obviously isn't just whether or not you have a physical ear and can funnel sound waves into your inner ear and and connect that little bone and, and your brain decode that. It's do you comprehend and receive what you have physically heard? And so John was obviously remembering when Jesus said, if anyone has ears, let him hear. The same idea. Obviously, most of us have ears. Um, most of us can physically hear. So that's not what's being said. What's being said is, is do we comprehend, receive, and then live out what we have heard? And so for us, it's all about receiving the truth that Jesus came in the flesh, but with all the implications that that means, right? So do we know what the Bible says about Jesus, and do we believe it? That is the test. And with that, we are very easily able to spot the fakes. And so hope that's encouraging you, encouraging you today. Uh, have a blessed rest of your week.